This is my blast chamber for my upcoming rocket motor, Mega X. In today's video, we're going to dive into how I designed and built this chamber from the ground up. This marks the very first video in my Mega X rocket motor series. And if you don't already know, Mega X will be the biggest rocket motor I've ever built. Right now, I'm deep in the design phase and I'll be posting a whole series of videos covering every step of the build. This motor will pack 10 pounds of propellant with a total impulse of 5,000 newton seconds and a peak thrust of 500 pounds. And with that kind of power, I need a safe place to light this motor. It's been a journey building this chamber. Weather changed a little bit, we need uh, to get... So let's dive right in. Rocket motors at this scale can be extremely dangerous. Even a small defect in the casing could cause catastrophic failures. A failure like that could send metal fragments flying, potentially damaging property or worse. To prevent that, I decided to build this test chamber underground. This way, if anything goes wrong, the debris is contained. The walls are built from concrete blocks, also known as cinder blocks, hollow rectangular blocks commonly used for strong, durable construction. These cinder blocks will be connected together with mortar to create four solid walls. After experimenting with dimensions on Onshape, I plotted out exactly where the structure should go, making sure it could house not just the rocket motor, but all the supporting hardware, the test stand, load cell, pressure transducer, and more. The build itself came together in two main steps. First, pouring the reinforced concrete pad to act as a floor and foundation, and then stacking the cinder blocks to form the chamber walls. Once I had the location of the test chamber plotted out, it was time to start digging. I was very confident I could do it myself. Dude, this is so easy. I'm gonna finish this in an hour. But it didn't work out too well. Using the excavator, the dig was about 30 minutes, and if I'd done it myself, it would take several days. Not long after the hole was finished, my shipment of cinder blocks, cement, and mortar arrived. With the materials in hand, I built a concrete form out of 2x4s and cut sections of metal fencing to serve as rebar. Rebar is critical. Concrete is strong in compression, but weak in tension, and the fencing gives it its tensile strength it needs. After that, I carried out the form and put it in the hole. Do you want to explain what you're doing? Yeah, so here I'm adding these stakes and then I'm gonna screw them for levelness. Let's see, pretty level. All right, so everything's level. We got one, two, three, four stakes. So everything's set up. We compacted all the dirt. It doesn't look too compact, but it's pretty compact. Um, I'm gonna set you guys up on this large tripod and get a nice time lapse of doing all the concrete. So we got it all poured. Honestly, we poured it a little bit watery when we mixed it. To finish it, it's very awkward. It's not as easy as this stuff. Finishing this stuff was really easy. So I got this ladder sideways. I'll add some videos after this showing how I do it. Also, it started raining when I was finishing the concrete, so I need to put a tarp over it. Here's how the concrete's looking about 12 hours after. Finishes. Not bad, not great, but it was very, very difficult finishing it underground. Now moving on to the first layer of cinder blocks. This layer was by far the most difficult and the most important. For this layer, I need to make sure it was perfectly square so every layer above it lined up correctly. I also quickly learned that my mortar mix was way too dry. Overall, this first layer took a while, especially because this was my first time ever laying block. But eventually, I finished the layer and came back the next day to start the second layer. Not to bore you, but the second and third layer were exactly the same, just laying more block. So I just got out here. We're gonna go put on the fourth layer. It just rained a lot, and we have an issue. It is filling up with water. Um, when it's done, this won't be an issue because we're going to have a wooden cap, so if it rains, but I got to figure out a way to get this water out. It's a good probably quarter inch um, all the way across. Unfortunately, the water was too low to use a pump, so this is my very advanced way of getting the water out. So for this next layer, this layer is actually going to be above ground, so it really matters how it looks. The plan is to just set the two corner blocks on each corner first, because if you come over here, when I just work from one side and work around, that last block sometimes is a little too far in, not far out like this, and then it doesn't get a good finish. Um, it doesn't matter down here because it's going to be filled in, but for this layer, you're going to see it. So I'm thinking about doing 
two here, two here, two here, and two here. So we know it's perfectly gonna fit and then fill in the one block in the middle. So we're three quarters of the way done. Um, as you can see, weather changed a little bit. We need to, uh, to get, yeah, it's currently thundering. We're, yeah, like I was saying, we're three quarters of the way done. We got one more corner and then two more middles. Um, it's looking pretty good. We're getting pretty good on these outsides, pretty square. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the result right now. All right, so we're on to the last cap. We got them all set out. I think it's gonna be pretty easy. Probably just the same as this, just there halfers gives a nice little top look to it so there's no holes going down in it. Overall this last layer was pretty straightforward. Not much leveling was needed since I already leveled each layer as I went. So before we put the last cap on I got a few things to put in there. Um, for good luck for the Mega X test series. First, I got my first ever rocket propellant I tried making from scratch. Didn't work too well, so that's gonna go down in there. Then we got an off cut of the casing of SN3. Then we got some shavings from when I drilled the radial bolt holes from SN5's casing. I'll put those down there too. And just like that, it's set. We got all of the bricks set. i show you guys the inside. It's looking pretty good. Uh, we still got a lot to do. We're gonna paint this whole inside and paint the outside. We got a backfill, a lot of dirt. We have all the dirt over there. Some of it's leveled out that we'll dig up. And just like that, the hard part is done. I'll let this dry for a few days and then come back and paint. Before I paint, I scrape the blocks to get rid of any loose mortar and clean the inside. I painted the chamber with dry lock, a waterproofing paint that seals concrete and protects it from moisture. This was definitely my favorite part of the project. Once I let the first coat dry, I followed it with three more coats to make sure all the surfaces were covered. Here's how the test chamber is looking about 12 hours after painting. Definitely looks way nicer. I like how it looks um, way better. Now it's just time to backfill. Um, I'm gonna be backfilling with this sandy clay. This is topsoil right here, and this is a bunch of sandy clay. Realistically, I should be backfilling with some stone so it can drain, but this is a big area, so that would be a lot of stone, and that would be a little bit expensive. So I think I'm just gonna go with this sandy clay. It does drain somewhat nicely, but it's definitely not the best option. The backfilling was pretty straightforward. Surprisingly, it went way faster than I expected, only took about 30 minutes. I compacted the dirt as best as I could, but I'll need to come back periodically and add more once it settles. And here's the blast chamber totally finished. It's looking really nice. We just painted it and backfilled it the other day. There's one thing we need to do. We do need to put a wooden top over it so when it rains, it doesn't fill up with water because this is pretty much um, sealed in watertight. This will hold water. So we just wanna make sure it doesn't flood and obviously that would not be great. Um, it's gonna serve a really good purpose being a safe area to light off Mega X. So if anything were to happen, even though the chances of anything happen is very low, but if anything does happen, it's underground. So nothing will damage any property or people and it will work out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more rocket motor stuff, please subscribe and check out my channel. Also, if you'd like to support my work, you can become a member on YouTube. Link is in the description. So please subscribe, comment, and like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Welcome to Segment Maya, where it's all about me. I'm currently sitting on my throne of center blocks, watching him do his thing. But if you enjoyed, comment Team Maya.
and then you'll see more of me. But actually you may not because I'm going back to school.